And that is why you are not getting a pygmy seahorse for your birthday. Because we don't know when your birthday is. We found you outside. Oh, what is that? Okay. Oh, hello guys. So on these, what I learned today videos, they're normally shorter videos. They're more, more normally about something I learned, little tidbits of information I found about the ocean or sea critters. But today, well, this whole week, I went down the rabbit hole about pygmy seahorses. For instance, did you know there are actually about eight different species of pygmy seahorses? I never knew. I thought there was one. I've seen one. So in this video, I want to talk about that. So let's go. Hmm? Critter hunter. So most divers, if they've seen any at all, have seen only one species of pygmy seahorse, and that's the Bargabant's pygmy. Well, just like me. They're the little little dudes. They're, they're not even the smallest ones. So in this video, I want to talk about the Bargabants and the other seven and let you know where you can find them if you're lucky enough or if you search hard enough. So the Bargabants. Uh, the Bargabants is probably the most popular, the most known by all scuba divers or underwater photographers. In fact, they don't call it the Bargabants pygmy seahorse. Most people just call it the pygmy seahorse because they don't know that there's other species. Uh, myself included. I've been on over 2,100 plus dives and I've only seen this little Bargabant seahorse. And as you can see, he's really cute. So the Bargabants, you can find it all around Southeast Asia from Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia probably, Papua New Guinea, and East Timor, maybe even the Solomon Islands. Basically, I just named everything in the Coral Triangle, but that's the most, that's, that's probably where you're going to find them. But even that said, they're still hard to find. You're going to have to find a dive shop that knows where they're at. The thing about the Bargabant seahorse or pygmy seahorse is that they rely on Gargonian sea fans as their host or their home. So you're going to have to find those. And if that's why they're kind of threatened at the moment because as climate change and things like that uh, threaten the Gargonian sea fans, well, if they go, the Bargabants goes. So, yeah, that's the Bargabant. <laughs> All right, guys, on a side note, I am in no way uh, expert in this. I'm at best a wannabe home naturalist and... All the information I get from about these pygmy seahorses is from Dr. Richard Smith and his book and his website, which I'll link to in the description below. But Dr. Richard Smith is a marine biologist and he's the only person in history to have a PhD in pygmy seahorse studies. So all of the pygmy sea, all eight on this list, he has observed, w photographed, everything uh not to mention the last two which well i don't want to give it away but let's just say he's the expert i'm not uh i'm just the presenter i want to show the world awesome species that they probably never knew about but people like this are the experts in individual species not me so if i get something wrong i'm sorry especially if dr richards is by some miracle watching this I mean, Richard, not Richards. Uh, sorry if I got something wrong and all credits to you. <laughs> so, yeah, back, back to the back to the thing. The next is the Denise's Pygmy Seahorse. By the way, I'm going to tell you when each of these were discovered or named by scientists. Uh, because as you, you'll see soon, it's, it's pretty interesting. After talking to some diver friends here in Philippines... Uh, they've actually seen the Denise's as well, and they're surprised I have it. And maybe I have, because they look so similar to the Bargabants, um, that I could I could got them mixed up. Who really knows? So according to Dr. Richard, while the Bargy lives almost exclusively on one species of Gargonian fan, 
The Denise's pygmy seahorse can live on a wide range of species of Gargonian and maybe even other soft coral. So it has more hosts and more survivability with climate change and things like that. Maybe a little less threatened. Although I, I don't quite understand because I've seen a lot more bargains, so I don't know. But according to Dr. Richard, that is one of the main differences between the species, besides their look and coloration. Yeah, so since all seahorses change color and texture to match their host, there's a lot more color variations of the Denises than the Bargamets, because the Bargamet is only on like one species, of course. So you can find uh, Denises in all different variations and colors, and as well as the little bumps that are meant to match the polyps and stuff on their host. I know bumps isn't very scientific, but well, y you know. So the Denise's Pygmy Seahorse was classified in 2003. So that's pretty interesting. Much, much later than the Bargy. The next one on my list is the Pontos Pygmy Seahorse or the Hippocampus Pontoi. The Pontos is a much smaller pygmy, topping out at 1.7 centimeters. And I, I don't know how small centimeters are, so I had to go look. And that is, that is about half an inch, or the size of like a US dime coin. So that is freaking tiny. Unlike the Bargabans and the Denises, the Pontos is free ranging in their territory and not confined to a single Gorgonian. They are more often found in Halamida or Calcareous algae. Okay, I just imagine finding a Halamida ghost pipe fish next to a Pontos seahorse. Yeah, that would be some epic footage. They are found in Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, and possibly Fiji at depths around 5 to 20 meters. There used to be a Severn's pygmy seahorse, but they're so close together. One was brown, one was white, but that's why they thought they were separate species. But in 2016, they were deemed the same species, uh, just different colors. So in 2016, they got rid of the Severn's pygmy, and now it's just the Pontos for both of them. So I've never seen a Ponto seahorse. Most people have not. Uh, but if you do find one, look around because they usually hang out in pairs or even groups. So maybe you'll find more. It'd be awesome. Next up is the Satomi's Pygmy Seahorse. The Satomi is named after a guide that collected the first known specimens. It is even more hard to find. So far, Satomi's have only been found in parts of Indonesia around Darawan, maybe Limbe Straits and Southern Borneo. And although they've only been found there and rarely, Dr. Richard thinks they could possibly have a wider range around the world. It's just that they're only nocturnal. They only come out at night and they're super active. So on top of that, with their tiny size and their great camouflage, they're hard to find. They're really hard to find. So they could be in a lot more places around Indonesia or Malaysia, even Philippines. Uh, but that's where they've been found so far. So given that there's so little information, uh, so little known about these guys, it just gives me hope that future generations have something awesome to look forward to, to study, to, you know, there's still something out there worth finding out. So that's pretty awesome. And it is also noteworthy that the Satomis is currently the smallest pygmy seahorse known and it tops out at like 1.4 centimeters. So that's freaking tiny. So the Satomis wasn't officially named or classified until 2008. And it can be recognized by their small size as well as the orange filaments and markings. So let me know if you have photos or videos or if you've ever seen one of these guys. Next up is the Coleman's Pygmy Seahorse. This species was described in 2003 by Rudy Cuter, and according to Australian Museum, it can get up to 15 millimeters or about half an inch, kind of like the rest. There is very little known about this pygmy, 
and it has only ever been confirmed to be seen around Lord Howe Island off of Australia, which is super remote. And there's some unconfirmed sightings around Papua New Guinea, but who knows if those were the right ones. So since there's so very little information out on these guys, even from the Australian Museum website or from Dr. Richard, I'm hoping that more people like Dr. Richard, who is the only person in history to have a PhD in pygmy seahorse studies, I hope more people like him pop up wanting to study these rare and awesome species. So until then, there's very little to know about this guy. Next up is the Wale Pygmy Seahorse or Wale Soft Coral Pygmy Seahorse. And I have no idea if I'm pronouncing Wale right. But yeah, he's pretty cool looking. The Wale Pygmy lives off various soft corals. And since those have much bigger stems to hold than the Gargonian that the other Pygmy Seahorses live on, then they have much longer tails. They're pretty cute because the tail has to wrap around the stems of those soft corals. The Wale might be one species that is in real danger of dying out. The reason is that it is only known in one small area of the world, the Tongan Islands in central Sulawesi of Indonesia. On top of that, it relies on delicate soft corals to survive. And if climate change and human encroachment continue to kill off soft corals around the Tamini Gulf, then the Wale will go with them. And I really hope there's some conscious effort or some groups or some researchers trying to study and conserve the Wale in the Tongan Islands. And hopefully it never goes extinct. But that's kind of why I do these videos so that more people know about them and get interested. So who knows what could happen. Next up is the Japanese Pygmy Seahorse, which is super interesting. The Japanese Pygmy Seahorse is a newly classified species found only in Florida. Okay, I'm just kidding. Found only in Japan. This is one of the new species that Dr. Richard himself found, studied, and eventually helped to classify and name. So huge props to him. He actually went to a seahorse conference in Tokyo. And then on his own time, he went north of Tokyo. I think it's like 80 kilometers. And found, a, it, he said it was really hard to find an English speaking uh, dive center. But with photos, he showed what he wanted to find. And they took him out and he was actually able to find the Japanese pygmy seahorse. And that led to him bringing other researchers and finally getting it classified as a new species. So good job there. Also, I have to say that's like a dream come true for all naturalists is being able to just go and find a new species. So I'm super jealous. Also called the Japanese pig, this little guy reaching about 1.6 centimeters has only been found around the Izu Islands about 180 miles from Tokyo. Although it is possible they could have a wider range, it's just too little is known about them. Uh, but they, they do not rely on a single host like a lot of the other pygmy seahorses. They're often found on tufts of algae and things like that. So they, they possibly have a wider range. A lot more research needs to go into these guys. So hopefully more people explore Japan and the subtropical areas and study these little seahorse dudes. You know, pygmies. Pygmy seahorses. So yeah, as I said, Dr. Richard had a hand in discovering, naming, classifying this guy. So this dude was only named in 2018. <laughs> That's awesome news, huh? Naturalists and zoologists and biologists are still, to this day able to find new species. So that is incredible news. It's awesome. So next up is the Sadwana pygmy seahorse. And if you thought discovering a new seahorse species in 2018 was awesome, this little dude also discovered, named, classified by Dr. Richard Smith was found in 2020. It also happens to be the one and only pygmy seahorse on the entire African continent and 
the entire Indian Ocean. So that is an amazing find. In 2018, Dr. Richard received a photo of a strange seahorse from a local diver in South Africa. He immediately recognized it as a pygmy, but then realized that no pygmy has ever been seen in the Indian Ocean. So he flew down to take a look, as you would. With the help of that local, Savannah Nalu Oliveira, he was able to photograph a handful of these new species, and eventually with the help of fellow researchers, in 2020 was able to identify and classify it. So guys, to me this is insane. You can still go out there and find new species to this day. Imagine if he found a new pygmy seahorse in South Africa, where else could they be? Mozambique, Madagascar, Maldives, Reunion. I mean, how about Western Africa? There's so many more possibilities for naturalists and biologists to go out and still discover new and awesome things. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is, like I said, this is a longer video. I just went down the rabbit hole and it's just so interesting to me about these certain species and critters and awesome biologists searching the world and finding new stuff. So I'm sorry if it's a little long, but if you guys have ever seen any of these pygmy seahorses, let me know. I want to hear the stories. Let me know in the comments below and I will see you on the next one. Bye. Yeah. Subscribe.